welcome to my church. legendary comedy duo Cheech and Chong once sang a song called Basketball Jones. This song is my anthem and it makes me proud. Ever since I was a little baby I always be driven. Just give me the basketball and I'll go one-on-one -on -one against the world left hand. I can dribble with my tongue. Basketball is the only thing in this world that truly brings me peace. It even brought the Harlem Globetrotters and the North Koreans together. Jesus couldn't do that, but basketball can. Basketball helps me think, and at the same time, helps me to not think at all, to just be. In 1945, a large jar was found in a cave close to the Egyptian city Nag Hammadi. Inside the jar was a collection of books written 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth. One of these books, the Gospel of Thomas, is an interview containing the sayings of Jesus that Thomas wrote down. Whoever has ears, let him hear. There is light within a man of light and he lights up the whole world. If he does not shine, he is dark. Split a piece of wood, and I am there. Lift up the stone, and you will find me there. His disciples said to him, When will the kingdom come? 
Jesus said, it will not come by waiting for it. It will not be a matter of saying, here it is, or there it is. Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. I think I am starting to realize it. To find God, you do not need to go to church. All you have to do is take a walk in the park. Earth is God's heavenly kingdom. The Gospel of Thomas, to me, proves that Jesus was a student of the Buddha, which translates to the one who woke up. One of Jesus' sayings is, He who drinks from my mouth will become as I am, and I shall be eaten. This is Buddhism in a nutshell. To be able to log into the consciousness within us, similar to the internet, but instead to Mother Earth's brainwave. Every religion is just a doorway back to the source within you. There are many paths to the mountaintop. Everything that you see living on the planet Earth has an energy consciousness. Every plant, every bug, every animal is propelled by energy consciousness. Even Earth is propelled by energy. I personally believe that every religion and myth are the Earth's dream, written down by ones who have been able to log in or meditate to Mother Earth's consciousness within ourselves, because we, ourselves, are a part of the earth. Before the internet, before airplanes, before telephones, before railroad and boat, human civilizations were isolated. Why is it that every civilization developed similar myths and beliefs? It is because every human is similar to one another. We all have the same bodily structure. We all have the same internal organ. We all have similar brain. With the same thoughts, the same desires, the same dream. It is not a coincidence because we are all one, an important part of the Earth's energy consciousness. I believe that Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and the founding fathers of our nation knew this to be true. Look at the pyramid on the back of a dollar bill. Imagine there are four people standing, one on each side of the pyramid. At the base of the pyramid, each person would be on a different side, isolated from each other. But as you reach the top, all of the points come together to reach the eye of God, which is the God of reason. And reason is the key element of democracy. This is also why our founding fathers opposed religious intolerance, because every person is capable of reason and to know the mind of God. Millions of Muslims are not wrong. Millions of Christians are not wrong. Millions of Jews, Hindus, Deists, Atheists, Buddhists, what have you, are not wrong. There are many paths to the mountaintop. And today, my mountaintop is Pinnacle Mountain.
holy water is not holy because a priest said the prayer over it. Water is holy because living things need it or we will all die and no one knows why. I used to be an altar boy growing up. I know what you are thinking. My preachers never tried to stick an Advent candle up my ass, okay? I was one of the lucky ones. My preachers wanted me to think and not just nod my head and say amen in church like a zombie. When I was 10, the preacher told me to get some holy water out of the bathroom sink because a baby was being baptized in church later that morning. I felt betrayed. I had thought holy water was some mystical shit. I stood in the bathroom with the bowl and thought if all water is holy, then toilet water would be just fine. So I dipped the holy bowl in the light blue toilet water and smiled at the urinal cake. However, my conscience got the better of me. Was it God? A divine intervention? Telling me this would be a sin for that poor little baby to be baptized in blue urinal cake water? No. It was my earthly father who had put the fear of God in me. I knew if I were to take that dookie water back into the church, my dad would give me the worst ass whooping of my life. I got a lot of ass whooping in those early days, and I deserve every one. Some kids don't need ass whoopings to learn, but I sure did. I would probably be in prison today if it was not for all those ass whoopings. I guarantee you, all these young men you see on the news sh shooting each other and everybody else never got ass whooped. Now, they might have gotten spanking, but there's a difference. You can't sit down after an ass whooping. I would walk around with my head down, holding both butt cheeks. I don't think I've ever feared God, but I definitely feared my father. He put the fear of God in me at an early age. And you're never too old to get an ass whooping, boy. I told that story to a random Baptist preacher and a youth group one night in Benton, Arkansas when I went to this church to play basketball. I wanted to just play ball, but the preacher wanted to have a kumbaya session beforehand. He said, you should fear God and the flames of hell that await you. I picked up a Bible that had the phrase, the word of God written on the cover. I said, you know God didn't write this, right? This was written by man, a K 